All right, today I'm taking another trip down Ubuntu's memory lane, this time taking a look at Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. Now, this was the third LTS release of Ubuntu, and it came out in April of 2010. So now this release brought a complete redesign to the user interface as far as theming and icons. It introduced the now famous ambience theme. Now, this Ubuntu release divided users. There were some people that thought that the changes were made to copy macOS, but there were also, of course, those that liked the new interface or even really liked it. But without further ado, let's go install it in a VM and take a look at it. Alright, so now, in case you're unaware, Ubuntu actually keeps an archive of their older releases. It's at old-releases.ubuntu.com slash releases. And then the one we're after is 10.04 LTS. And then we're going to get the 64-bit version. Now I've already downloaded this file. I've got it right here in my VMware folder. So now let's get Ubuntu 10.04 installed in the VM. I'm going to pop into VMware, create a new virtual machine. Since I want to capture the installation process, I'm going to pick I will install the operating system later so that way it doesn't do its easy install. But anyway, we're going to click next. And then this OS is fine. I'm going to call it Ubuntu 10.04. Click next and 20 gigs will be fine. I'm going to store it as a single file. Let's customize this hardware a bit, change the network connection to bridged and USB controller to 3.1. And then we're going to go to the CD DVD settings and then use our Ubuntu 10.04 ISO file. And then we can click finish, close. So now I've got my Ubuntu 10.04 VM right here. And all I have to do is boot it up. I can close out of the file manager here. All right, and then let's select English as our language and try Ubuntu without installing, just to see what the live ISO so it looked like. Love that login sound, by the way. Ubuntu actually had very nice login sounds. It's a shame that you don't really have them anymore. But anyway, let's actually get this display scaling up by going to System, Preferences, Monitors. And then we're going to change our monitor to my native screen resolution. In my case, 1366 by 768. I know I have a crappy screen resolution, but it works fine for me. We're going to keep the configuration, close it. And now we're in the Ubuntu Live ISO, and we can go install Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. And we're going to select English as our language. We are in the Toronto time zone. English USA works fine for my keyboard layout. And this is just a blank virtual machine disk, so let's erase and use the entire disk. And I'm going to punch in my info. And I actually want to call this computer Ubuntu 10.04. I wonder what that thing said. Log in N to decrypt my home folder. I'm assuming that's an option to encrypt your home folder. But I'm going to log in automatically. I wouldn't normally do this, but this is a virtual machine and it's already protected by my hosts system login. And besides, I'm going to be deleting this virtual machine right after I'm done with this video. But anyway, we're going to click forward. And then this is our installation configuration. Let's see what's in our advanced settings. And we can actually set an HTTP proxy here and change which device the bootloader is installed to. But anyway, this all looks fine. So let's go ahead and click install. And then it'll go install Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. So now this will take a while. So I'll speed this up. All right, now that our installation is complete, we're going to click Restart Now, and then we'll press Enter for it to restart, and then it'll boot us into Ubuntu 10.04. All right, so now we're at our desktop, and we've got to adjust our display settings again. So now let's have a look around here. The top bar is very reminiscent of Mac OS, and what was also reminiscent of Mac OS was the title bar and where the buttons were placed, because as you may know, Mac OS places their title bar buttons on the left. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction of this video, Video. Some people were upset about this because they thought that this was meant to copy Mac OS and that Ubuntu was essentially becoming a Mac OS ripoff. But anyway, we still have the GNOME 2 desktop, as you can see in about GNOME. This is 2.30.2. Now, this is actually the last LTS release of Ubuntu to ship the GNOME 2 desktop. The very last release was 10.10, .10, which came after this one. And then with 11.04, Ubuntu switched to the Unity desktop by default, which I've actually got installed here. And I also want to point out that I've installed it on a Ubuntu 20.04 installation. I'm not stupid enough to use end-of-life software, just in case you were wondering why my desktop looks like an old Ubuntu release. But anyway, I'm gonna take a second here to look at the theme, because this is a key signature feature of Ubuntu 10.04, was its new theme. It switched to an orange mixed with purple theming scheme, and these 
these are the colors that have been associated with Ubuntu and are still associated with Ubuntu to this day. But if you look at the layout, it's still the same as it was in older versions of Ubuntu, because this is still using the GNOME 2 desktop environment. Remember, this is a year before Ubuntu switched to Unity. So the top bar worked the same as it did in GNOME 2. And of course, we've got our network connections right here. But anyway, let's actually have a look around, starting off with the preferences. I'm going to try not to stretch out this video to be unnecessarily long, but I do want to see what we have for themes, because again, themes are a key feature of Ubuntu 10.04. We've got the ambience theme, and we've also got a radiance theme if you wanted your top bar to be white instead of black. You actually still had that up until 18.04 if you installed GNOME tweaks, or for Unity-based releases, you could install the Unity tweak tool. Compared to Ubuntu 6.06 .06 and 8.04, not a lot of theme options. I mean, hey, do you have the dust sand theme and the new wave theme? Look very similar. Actually, I kind of like what the X button does when you hover over it on the new wave theme. But you know what? Let's switch back to the ambient scene since this was associated with Ubuntu 10.04. And of course, you could install more themes or customize existing ones. But anyway, let's see what we've got for backgrounds. Let's see what happens if we click no desktop background. Okay, we have a solid purple color. That actually does kind of look nice, even though it's just a solid color. Oh, we've actually got a few backgrounds here. Ooh, that one looks nice. Yeah, Ubuntu has a reputation for shipping really nice backgrounds, at least in my opinion. I don't know about you. And if you're using a solid color background, of course, you could actually change the color. And we've got fonts in here and visual effects. Now, I can't really use any of these because I'm in a virtual machine. Now, let's see what's in customization options. You could change your controls, colors, window borders, icons, even though there aren't that many icons in here. Like, the last five are really just duplicates, or at least just look like duplicates according to their, how do I put this, uh, their signature icon. And you could also change your mouse pointer. You know, I'm gonna stick with DMZ white. But anyway, let's look around the rest of the OS. We've got our usual accessories here, some basic games, and you still have F-Spot Photo Manager. You can import your pictures folder, and there's nothing here, so... This is what that looked like. And we do have Firefox. I wonder what version of Firefox, and I know it's also listed up here. And it's trying to connect to start.ubuntu.com, which doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, I want to see what version of Firefox this is. 10.0.1. So I imagine this is not going to be able to load modern web pages. But let's go to my YouTube channel anyway. Yeah, no, YouTube is a no-go on this. What about ubuntu.com? No common encryption algorithm. And we still have the remote desktop viewer and terminal server client and empathy. I'm not really going to bother setting this up. Not sure if it even works today. But anyway, that was actually one key feature of Ubuntu 10.04 was its online interactions in the dash, which was actually a big deal back then. And you have Ubuntu 1, which doesn't exist anymore. Get to our chat accounts, our broadcast accounts. I'm not even going to bother setting these up. The old Twitter logo brings back memories. But anyway, we still have open office here not LibreOffice, OpenOffice. It would still be another year before LibreOffice was included in Ubuntu, starting on 11.04. And we still have Brocero, a disk burning application, and the PTV video editor, which is a very basic video editor. I believe you could still install it today. I believe that's still available on the repos today. Actually, the version that preceded this, Ubuntu 19.10, debuted the Ubuntu Software Center, which was replaced with GNOME Software in 16.04. In my opinion, this really made Ubuntu unique, even if it did suffer from from performance issues at its first inception. But by the time 12.04 and 14.04 rolled around, it matured to a point where it was stable. But I guess the Ubuntu project just didn't feel it was worth their time maintaining it when they had GNOME software. But anyway, this was actually intended to replace the add and move tool that you'd find in Ubuntu versions prior to 19.10. And we can see our installed software right here. Let's see what happens if we actually look at featured applications. Let's see what happens. We click use this source. Oh, it says fail to download. Okay, so basically what's going to happen with old releases of Ubuntu, like interim releases that are past their end of life and LTS releases before 12.04, is you're going to have issues updating the system, even this says the release is not supported anymore. I guess you do kind of like that effect and you can just wipe off. You can just clear the window with this, kind of acts like an eraser, as the release is not supported anymore and it crashes. Yes, let's force quit this. So what we have to do to be able to get applications and updates on this is going to terminal, then type sudo nano slash etsy slash apt slash sources dot list, and then we need to find every single dev line, then change it from archive.ubuntu.com, the part before that will depend on what country you're in, and I'm in Canada, so it's CA, but anyway, you're going to get rid of that part before dot ubuntu.com, and then replace that with old releases dot ubuntu.com, and then do this for every single dev line. We can just comment out 
the dev src lines. We don't really need any source code for the purposes of this video, and I'll meet you once I'm done. And we also have to do the same with anything that says security.ubuntu.com. We have to replace it with old-releases.ubuntu.com. And again, we can also comment out those dev src lines, and I'll meet you once I'm done that. All right, and then once we're done, we can just hit control X, then Y, then enter. And now we should be able to get updates. Oh, it's still gonna say our release is not supported anymore. Let's actually try this again. If this persists, we can always use the terminal. sudo apt-get update. And now we can do sudo apt-get upgrade to install updates. Then hit enter, and it'll go and install our updates. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, looks like this update's done. So let's reboot to apply our update. Oh, it says we need to be root. You know what? We can actually go up here and do restart. It's even saying that restart is required. So let's restart. Okay, so now for some reason, it positioned my icons on the top panel weirdly. I don't know why. You know what? Let's not worry about it. Okay, let's actually go back into the software center and try installing Audacity one more time. Oh, and now we actually have an install option. Let's click on that, then install it. And I noticed that it's actually installing this time. You can actually see the in-progress menu here. Did it install? It's in sound and video, and yes, it installed. Audacity 1.3.12 beta. I don't know why they included a beta package in Ubuntu, but okay. This is actually kind of disappointing that Audacity hasn't changed much over the past 10 plus years. And I actually also believe that this is the Ubuntu version that stopped shipping GIMP by default. I think prior versions actually had GIMP. I'd be wrong. But anyway, I want to see what's in this help menu. Okay, some very basic stuff. Maybe except for this one. Oh, there's also using the command line. That was actually kind of helpful to allow a new user to learn the command line. Hmm, I wonder what this system testing was. Okay, let's see if our system is working properly. I mean, hey, this is only a virtual machine. So, you know what, let's test everything. Yeah, let's just... Okay, that was loud. Yes. Hard drives were detected. Is this correct? Yes. Disk bench. Okay, you get to see how fast your disk is. I actually have an SSD. This might be kind of slow for an SSD, but at the same time, this isn't a virtual machine. Okay, you know what? We don't need to go through everything. I don't know how long this is going to take, but still, this was actually a pretty good idea. I actually kind of wish modern Ubuntu versions had this. But anyway, this is back in the days when we could customize our login screen, assuming we had administrative privileges, of course, which we do. Gonna as Drew automatically. Oh, we can actually choose whether or not to play the login sound. We can select the default desktop environment. And I noticed how default applications was called preferred applications back then. There was also a computer janitor back then. This no longer exists on modern Ubuntu versions. I forget when this is removed, but I know it had to be sometime in the Unity era, which was between 11.04 and 17.04. Let's see what we want to do. Okay, that didn't take too long. Basically a cleanup application. Now, I forget why this was removed, but I think it had something to do with it breaking systems. And we actually had network tools back then. This is actually on our loopback interface. So that's why we get the local host addresses. What is this unknown interface? Okay, I guess that's kind of a null interface, or at least what I like to call a null interface, because I can tell this is a dummy IP address. And we can see our IP address from here. I'm actually gonna ping my home server real quick, which is at 192.168.0.101 on my local network. We only need to send five requests. Not quite sure why the first one took a lot longer than the rest. Let's actually do ten this time. Maybe the server just needed to be woken up. Whoa! Quite a long ping. I'm actually gonna run this one more time. This is actually kind of mesmerizing, even though I can't keep this up forever, as to not make this video crazy long. Okay, let's uh, get our routing table information. And we also have trace right here. This is actually kind of cool. Let's trace our to my server on my local network. Okay, this is taking a long time, so let's stop that. Port scan. Also another thing that's taking a long time. Oh, we actually had who is look up here. In case you don't know, who is basically shows the information about a domain name, like its owner, and when it was registered, when it expires, etc, etc. You can actually go to any domain registrar's website and they'll have a who is look up tool, but it was actually kind of cool to be able to do it from here. Let's actually do a who is look up on ubuntu.com, and I can tell that they need to renew their domain name in about 11 months from now. And there's their registrar, and you can actually go do who is look ups on your own time. That was actually kind of a cool tool. And this is actually 
actually also back in the days when you had Synaptic Package Manager, which is basically an advanced graphical package manager. You can still install it today through the Ubuntu repos. It's just no longer included by default. And you can tell disk utility looked so different back then, and this was a GNOME thing. I can tell by the version number. It matches the version of GNOME that we're on. Man, things have come a long way. And Startup Disk Creator is another example of an application that hasn't really changed much. Like here's Startup Disk Creator on my host system. Kind of changed, but not really. I guess the only thing you could say changed is that this interface was simplified, but that's pretty much it. And one last thing I want to say before I go is that older versions of Ubuntu had this about page, where if you go to System Preferences About Me, you could change your password, and you could actually add information about you, like your address. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't need to have that information in this video. And you could pick your account picture from here. I want to see if I can actually get a preview here. That doesn't look like you could do that. You know what? I think Penguin would be very appropriate because the Linux mascot is a penguin, and this is a Linux distro, albeit an ancient Linux distro. But anyway, let's see if it'll show up when we lock the screen. There it is. Oh, and one cool thing that Ubuntu versions used to have is you could actually leave a message. I imagine this could have been abused, though, if you left your laptop in the open and it was locked, and then they could just leave you a mean message. I'm actually going to leave a message just for fun. You could, of course, write anything you want, but you know what? Let's just write something nice. Like, have a nice day with a smiling emoticon, and save that. So then, when you log back in, you got the message right here. I do wonder if you logged out. Oh man, that was loud. You also had your desktop icon here, and this is what Ubuntu 10.04's login screen looked like. You could pick your desktop environment from here, you could even change your keyboard layout and your language, and set up universal access preferences. But anyway, I guess that's it for this video, since there's not really much else to go over. 10.04 mostly just focused on the visual changes. But anyway, let's shut this down and call it a day. And those were my first impressions on Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. So now, since this Ubuntu release and its support on the desktop all the way back in 2013, I wouldn't recommend installing this on your system and using it as your daily driver for security reasons. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it interesting, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.